So we talk about Bhagwa Jang being like um, puzzle pieces. And you have breathing and you have meditation and you have footwork and you have um, power training. Meditation gets into visualization, you know, imagination. You have, um, you have sparring and you have shadow boxing, you know, it's like imagination sparring. There's all these different aspects, how to create a dragon like whipping body, how to make a structural body like a big, like earth or a rock, you know, it's like all these aspects have to come together. In the advanced class, we were discussing a bit about what is heavy power and it's a, lot of, it's a lot about structure in the body. In the Qigong class, one of my examples was how you line up against each other and you push each other and you're standing facing each other. So it's easy to lose balance and get knocked over, right? So we wanna be very in tune with the body structure. How to grow, well, one of my examples was the tree has deep roots, as deep and wide as it goes up into the sky. It can reach for the sun among all these other trees related to how much root it has. And I remember when Sandy came through New Jersey, my favorite practice area had these big old giant trees and they got uprooted. It was amazing, it had a big ditch underneath from how, so even those powerful roots, when there's enough of a force, it can still get taken out. And that's where the other side of the equation, so a big, strong, thick trunk, right? So much structure. And then you have the trees who just blew with the wind and went with the, with the problem, right? No matter how much energy, no matter how much forces, they go with it. But where am I going with this? There's another piece in the puzzle. And we don't usually talk about it too much in the meditation class. And this is self-defense. So much of self-defense, real, real personal safety is, is mental. And for those of you that, that aren't aware or didn't read my book, I highly recommend it. You go to the appendix. You read what I put together in there in a very concise format. Read those few chapters there. It's very informative, okay? Um, if I do say so myself. But I think it's very helpful information because people focus, when they talk self-defense, they think fighting. All about fighting. And there's so many people that think that the Chinese martial arts, the Kung Fu, is, they even use the word fake. And I know there's a lot of bad stuff out there, but... Personally, it's, it's not fake unless you're trained in that way. You know, if you're serious about how you practice. My older brother, Chibo Moore, came out of Vietnam. <laughs> you know, life and death kind of things. And he helped me understand really how to train where it's real. You don't get any more real than that, okay? The soldier. So there's people who think, and, I, and I've been fortunate enough to have uh, a few different teachers. And my first teacher was, was all about remembering forms. And it's like, the more you can collect, the more you know for martial purposes. And nothing could be further than the, from the truth. That's why it's gotten a bad name. Now, why, why am I even bringing this up right now? Well, a friend of mine brought to my attention an interview, and this just happened within the last few weeks. A well-known MMA fighter was, uh, he woke up six or seven in the morning, his wife came running to him saying someone's in the house. So they had an intruder. And he runs out and he sees this guy near this, area near the kitchen and dining room or something and he just runs at him and, and tries to knock him over and try to try to take him out and in his mind he starts telling some of the things that he was that he was thinking and he was like 
Oh my God, if he has a knife. Oh my God, if he has a gun. He says, I have about two minutes of adrenaline to survive this, you know, and, and save my family. And it's like this mentality that the, the mind going off and thinking. And then he tells the different things that happen in the middle of this, this fight for his life. How he is punching them and, and kneeing them and elbowing them and over and over. And this guy is not going down. He's not, he's not getting knocked out. And he's just like exhausting himself fighting with this guy. He tries to get out of his back, tries to choke him out, and there's nothing he can do. And this is what is called a fighter. And those are also the kind of people that talk about some styles like Chinese martial arts being fake. He tells of some of the things that was going through his mind, like he yells to his mother-in-law, give me a knife. And then he gets a hold of the knife and he's like, now I've got, I can't hold him down with one hand because one of my hands is holding the knife. The intensity, the adrenaline, the fight or flight being the fight part of that. All of this happening. And, and it's like he doesn't know what to do. He asked the guy, do you have a weapon? And the guy says, yes. And then, you know, do you have, is there someone else here with you? Are you alone? He goes, no, there's someone else here. And he calls out Luke or something. The whole approach just seemed off when you're listening to it. And this is someone who knows how to fight. But does he know how to fight for real, I guess is what I want to say. Because when you're an MMA fighter, you are fighting in the ring. You know, boxers can be great fighters. They take you right out. They're very tough and they just got five main techniques and that's the rules and their, their hands are dangerous. But there are rules to keep people safe in the ring. And that's my point. What is real? What is fake? Is what people pay, they do pay-per-view and they watch these fights and these guys get all bloody and broken up and they're, they're tough as anything. They're modern day gladiators. But it doesn't always translate to a life or death situation apparently. This guy that, he, that, that came into his house, there's so many there's so many things because they find out later they look at video cameras in the neighborhood and he, this was the second house he entered that night he says he lives in this really nice neighborhood where they don't have any problems and it's pretty common maybe some of you can relate leave your car doors open leave your garage open front doors unlocked things like this and he realized he had left his garage open, which was connected to his house. So this guy literally was wandering down the street, probably high on something, looking for money, looking for drugs. Who knows he was looking for? He's just, he walked into more than one house. One guy, um, the neighbor yelled and screamed and, and got, the, got him out. He ran out of the house. But this guy ends up in this life or death fight which is mostly also because of the way he approached it, the way he just ran at him and, and, and brought the fight on, started the fight. One of the things I learned about real fighting, there's no real winner. And you have to be willing to do what it takes to end that thing quick. The mentality of the two minutes of adrenaline, you could be out in seconds, or it could go on for much longer. You can't, that thought in your mind shouldn't even be there. You know, animals in the wild, they don't get into this worrying and what if, they just do what needs to be done and they either kill or be killed or, or somehow they, they get out of the situation, they run away. In other words, the mind gets in the way, which is why I decided to bring this up in a meditation class. 
look, I'll be the first to, to say, you don't know how you're going to respond in any situation. So this isn't a knock on the individual at all. But it shows that at least this MMA fighter only really knew how to fight in the ring, apparently. Because what if he did have a weapon? What if he did have a friend? He was apparently lying. Took the cops about five or six minutes to get there. So he was fighting for five or six minutes straight. And they found out later he was, um, he was like a college wrestler or something. He was a young guy, at least previously. So maybe 165 pounds, but very strong, very tough. And, and he, took, he took this guy to task. I mean, could have been killed. Why am I bringing this up? Students need to know the mental side of this. So we're, we're on this lockdown. And the longer it goes, the more desperate people are going to be, become. And the question is, have you considered how safe your home is? I mean, even in our home, I, there, there's all this, um, this hacking, like stealing identities and hacking into, into databases. All. In other words, the criminals are coming out because of the bad time. So she's been dealing with all kinds of uh, hacking into email, into credit cards, you know, people buying stuff on our, on, on her cards and in her account. And it's like every day trying to deal with that. And also because the companies are shorthanded, so it's very hard to get in touch with them. Maybe you, some of you have experienced that. You could be all day trying to get in touch with someone to try to fix some, some kind of support. I know even with this, this format we use, this Zoom, we had a couple problems with a few of the videos and their support says to send them the video so they can convert them. And it's been weeks, they never answer. So, you know, support is very hard to come by these days. So the criminals are out, is my point. And so are your windows locked? Are your doors locked? Do you check everything? If someone comes to your door, are you aware if they're if they're really who they say they are do you just open up and and uh, sure we, we're going to be you know with the social distancing and the mask and we're about the distance but you know there's stories of a ups driver with a package and he broke in the house and and, and killed the people in the house and took like 80 dollars or something there's many many stories of just the criminals fooling people and so if it's never brought to your attention, if you've never thought about it, then you are literally a sitting duck without knowing it because they're looking for no different out in the world. They're looking for an easy target. This guy left his garage open that's attached to his home. The guy just walked right in. He didn't have to break windows, pick locks, nothing. Just walked right in because of this assumption of safety. A martial artist doesn't live like that. And I've had students over the years saying, well, you can't walk around paranoid. It's not paranoid. It's aware and prepared. It's knowledge about what is necessary to keep yourself safe. Because the criminal is looking for one who has no idea. Part of our practice has to be, how do I keep myself and my family safe? So now we're in the homes. Do you know who's coming to the door? For example, we have the front door and then you have a, another glass door. Is that left unlocked? We make sure we lock it. So if you did open one door, or one of the kids opened one of the doors to see who was outside, although we have a window we can look through, you should have a peephole or a window. You should know. And if you did open up to, let's say, a delivery like UPS or something, can you look to the left and the right to see if there's somebody ready to jump you? 
in my book, I told a story how I was on a ride back from training in Baltimore, I'm 95, and I stopped for food. And when I came out, I had uh, hands full of whatever food I had bought and a drink. And this big burly guy walks over to me and he's saying, hey, buddy, can you help me? My truck, something this and something that. And as I saw him approaching me, I quickly put my tray down on, my, on the top of my car and I looked. I looked behind, I looked under, and I kept my eye on him. What's behind me? What's on, is there someone under my car? Like my mind immediately expanded rather than going into tunnel vision about this guy and what he needs. Because as he's talking, I very quickly recognize because of training, he's just telling me too much information. This isn't how somebody asks for help. And I kept him away from me and I said, go inside. Somebody inside will help you. And he saw, I was very aware of whatever he was up to. And there's no question in my mind, he was up to no good. Because people who really need help, they don't approach you like that. He was trying to get my attention. And I've had plenty of opportunities, maybe you have too, where someone clearly tried to distract me. If someone, if you pull up to a traffic light and someone approached your window, do you focus on them? Or do you check the other side real quick? Are your doors even locked? But as you look one way or the other, their friend, their partner can come up the other way. And I've had it happen. I don't know why I've had these opportunities, but maybe it was so I could tell these stories one day. I'm a big believer in no coincidences. But I've had firsthand experiences where it's very clear. You know, I had a... I had a this guy seemed legitimate. He was just selling something apparently, but it was the same thing. I have my family, I have my little kids with me. He's driving his car up and he's trying to make some kind of offer. And he reaches out to shake my hand. So again, I'm looking back, anybody trying to grab my family, grab my kids. And as he reaches out, I shook his hand by rooting myself. So if anything funny happened, I would have broke his arm on this door. So my mind was ready for that. Not falling asleep, he pulls me, he could pull me in, hit my head on, on the roof of his car. You don't realize how fast people can get you, how fast they can take advantage of you. And so the point being, the martial artist is supposed to be aware, aware of possible scenarios, possible situations. They are protecting themselves at all times without being paranoid because that's what meditation is about. It's about calming the body, knowing how to use the breath to calm the mind. So in a situation, you can think clearly and not get caught in a bad situation, which happens in the blink of an eye. I recommended my book, okay, The Appendix. Read the appendix and the chapters there. I guarantee you it will help you. I'm going to show you another book. See this? Uh -oh. hmm. This has a lot of good information in it. Short and sweet. Everything from home defense, setting up security systems to personal defense, all these things. But it's just, it's people who are professional. You get your information from that they know from experience how to keep yourself and your family safe. Believe me, whatever level you are in life, there's levels above you. And there's levels below you and I'm talking financially and I'm talking struggle right now. And you don't think there's people who wouldn't think twice to break in a house and try to get what they need. This is real. You don't want to be that house. You don't want to look like nobody's home, but of course everybody's home now. You know, you don't want to leave things unlocked. You don't want to leave newspapers out front. It looks like you're not home. You know, newspapers dropped on your lawn. Make sure you get it. Don't leave your mailbox full like you're out of, out of town. All these little things because the worst thing is to be broken into when you're home. 
some of the advice with home is like, have you ever considered the scenario if someone was in the house, what you would do? This is why a lot of people believe in having a gun for self-defense. Of course, you have to know how to use it. You have to be well-trained. You have to know how to keep it safe. Keep it in a in a safe. Keep it with safety on. Although you have to be trained for that, but there's still a procedure, a process, a strategy. You know, having having a particular room that the that the family knows to go to, and it should be. If you have really young children, it should be maybe their room. You don't want to be collecting them. If you have an elderly person in your house, it should be their room so that you don't have to try to get them. Don't get the slowest, the smallest, the weakest person that you have to try to bring them to the special place. You go to them. You have everything set up so that room has what you need. A way to communicate out, call the police. It has a possible escape, maybe a ladder, like a fire ladder that comes out the window, whatever. You have to think about your scenario, but if you have a plan and the family knows the plan, if something happened, you just go to the plan. So this fighter had no clue, had no plan, could have been killed. And who knows what would have happened with his wife and his children, who knows. But no matter how hard he punched and kicked and elbowed and all this stuff that works for him in the ring with referees and rules, didn't do anything. This is why there's the schools also who that's all they want to do is fight. And I'm telling you, it's not about the fight. You want to get out of the fight. But if, if you do have to fight, there has to be an on switch. I was taught to become an animal. Can you do that? Yes, you can, but are you willing to? Animal doesn't think. Many years ago, I was a kid playing in the park and we had this nice collie. You know, the collie has all the hair, right? This big German shepherd, almost twice her size, came running around the corner. I was in the park, it was just me and the dog. And this was the sweetest, nicest dog you could ever imagine. And this thing looked like a wolf came around the corner, growling with the teeth out and coming for me. You would not believe what that collie did. That collie went for the throat this dog never fought anything in his life, but it knew in the moment to save me. It got that dog out of that dog, couldn't bite anything. This big German shepherd trying to bite and always getting his hair. <laughs> My dog is biting and hurting him. And he ran off. The point being, in the moment, can you do what's necessary? People have had broken limbs, have had broken something else, you know, and they still saved a child or something. You know, a mother with a child, how much love they sacrificed themselves because they decided not to be a victim. It's a mindset. And you come to a meditation class, you don't expect the self-defense, violent type of talking, but This is martial arts. You didn't come here to be in a monastery. The meditation is the foundation of this practice because there's plenty of martial artists. <laughs> there's plenty of even um, military trained people. There's plenty of MMA fighters who are locked up for life because this wasn't right when something happened because you can go too far because you don't recognize the threat. That fighter I started this with, the guy was in his home. And if you think about it, he started the fight. He ran at him to tackle him to, to do something, but 
I don't know, the neighbor yelled and screamed, picture this in court, if he killed this guy. Well, the neighbor yelled and screamed and he ran out. Why didn't you yell and scream? Self-defense is tricky in the courts, but I'm a big believer and I'd rather be judged by 12 than carried by six. The only way to make good decisions in that moment is clarity of mind, the ability to control your breath so you can calm down and make good decisions, recognizing in the moment how lethal is the situation. Can I get out of the house? Sometimes you have to get out of the house. And that's another thing that would come up. I believe it was in Virginia. It was recently on the news. What was it? Three men broke into a store and they had a, an employee there working. And he, got, he came out with a gun that they had for defense and he shot at them. And I think he killed one. And they put him in prison. And you know what the police asked him? Why didn't you run out the back? Interestingly enough, I think if he ran out the back, they had more people back there. So, But the point is, they locked him up. He was spending nights in jail for defending himself. Complicated. Can you make the right choice? But can your awareness your preparation and strategy make you less likely, much less likely to be chosen. Your house or your person, depending if or when. How real can we practice? It's not about me, but you may have to be violent one day because you can be injured or killed and injured in a way that's maimed for life. You know, it's, the alternative is not great. So when we're training martial arts, are we actually training the martial side in our minds? Because too many people in the martial arts, and this is why the Chinese martial arts get such a bad name because it's sophisticated. It takes time and there's a lot of, there's a lot of quantity But you have to be able to uh, find what's most important. The quality through repetition. You know, that's why we've learned that you know, three really good techniques is all you need to know. Bakwa John, our style, loves this. What is this? It's like a spear hand. You throw it in the eyes. You close, you know, someone comes close, you throw that in the eyes. You practice that all the time, visualizing with a target over and over. You take someone's eye, their head's going back. They're going to freak out because nobody wants to lose an eye. Another good one, we throw the palms, right? The nose. Hard. Here. Punch. Center line's good, right? Groin. The goal in a self-defense situation is to get out of the situation, not to beat the other person. The goal, even in a house, even in a house, a home invasion, is to get safe. Which is why I said, if you thought about it, if this happens, we all know what room to go to. You call 911, you get the police there as fast as you can. Everybody knows how to say the address very, very fast. Of course, today I believe you just call and they already know where you're calling from, which is good. Preparation is not paranoia. Preparation is smart. Heck, think about the situation we're all in right now. How about the people who've been storing up food and water and all the things for the end of the world. If this thing goes long enough, they're going to be in pretty good shape, right? 
people are already worrying about food. That's why they call them preppers, they're prepared for something happening, but most people don't do that. So when things go bad, it can't last very long, which is how this whole talk started. You don't think there's going to be people eventually hungry who are willing to break into homes and take what you have. I don't mean to scare you. I just want to alert you. I've always prided myself to make the school real. And sometimes this talk, we get away, you know, or just a couple students hear it here and there. And, but that's why. That's why I put it in the appendix of my book, right? But that book I held up, I'll hold it up again so you see it. This is one book, has a whole section on home invasion, right? Or keeping your home safe. And it gets into security systems and even ways to uh, you know, light things up and having cameras so you, you can, you know, th the criminal sees that stuff, even stickers on the windows, you know, like well, this is secure, covered by security. They're gonna pick the house that doesn't have it. So just having it is a deterrent. It's not that nobody can figure out how to get through your security system and the amount of time to put, no, it's, they're gonna pick an easier target, no different than being on the street. They're gonna pick an easier target, no different than being in the wild. Predators pick the easy target when they're hungry. This is reality. Martial artist accepts what is. That's the first thing you have to accept it. You don't. You go into shock. You can't do anything. You can't make good decisions. You're emotional. You're scared. That's why we have to educate, learn what to do, prepare, strategy, have control, have control of your mind and your breath, so you can implement your plan if the time ever comes most of the self-defense in today's world has been emotional dealing with stress giving good circulation in the body to stay healthy but there is that side the real the real possibilities okay so i just wanted to give a little different talk because Someone brought that to my attention, and I thought it was important. Let's go to meditation. Sit comfortably. Align yourself. As if to hold up the sky. And remember, as you go into the meditation, I will be closing this out. So you stay there 10, 15, 20 minutes or more on your own. Decide on a focal point. Make gaze at the point between the eyebrows while watching the breath. Or any focal point of your choosing. But stay with one. If the mind wanders, come back to your focal point. Wanders again, simply bring it back. No matter how many times, keep a passive attitude. No judgment about how you're doing. Simply practice. You have no place to go. No one calling for you. No one to answer to. All there is is here. And now.